Hello and uh, welcome to another episode of Insight, uh, a free uh, collaborative interview series and a knowledge resource uh, that is available online for absolutely anyone to access. Uh, today I have with me a special guest all the way from Gangtok in Sikkim. Uh, Kunga Tashi Lepcha is an independent photographer uh, based in Gangtok like I told you. He uh, has the lightest touch with his photos and works on well-researched projects that are important to him and local to his origin. He might be an Adivasi or native photographer from the mountains of Sikkim, but he is so much more than that binary definition, working on complex layered images and projects pregnant with meaning. He is completely self-taught and is part of multiple artist collectives like the Confluence <coughs> Collective in the Northeast of India. Kunga also has multiple has also had multiple exhibits and uh, publications of his work in India and Myanmar. And in 2019, he received the Amiya Prabha uh, Choudhury Memorial Grant at the Igaro Photo Festival. So let's dive into this episode of Insight with uh, Kunga Tashi Lepcha without any further ado. Hi Kunga, firstly, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for your the wonderful introduction. <laughs> it's uh, really great what you're doing. So thank, thank, thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity for all of us, including me, to learn from you, which is what uh, this platform is all about. Uh, so uh, yeah. how are you doing in this? Uh, I know it's a very strange time for all of us. Uh, that's why we're doing this interview mm -hmm. in this way. Uh, so, you know, how, how are you doing? Uh, it, at first, it was a little weird, uh, but now I think uh, I mean, you are slowly getting hang of it, you know, because you have been living like this for almost more than a month. Mm. So it was difficult at first, for especially for me to, you know, like uh, because the timetable had totally changed for me. I couldn't sleep uh, early. I couldn't wake up early, and I'm still uh, struggling with that, you know, trying to get getting up early. Okay. So. It's it's uh, I mean it's going fine now. I mean, it, right. at the start it was a little difficult to adjust to all the changes that were coming all of a sudden. Right. But now it's a uh, now you've gotten used to it a little bit, just like the rest of us. I guess. Yeah, I think yeah, and I think we I mean, we should get used to this. Uh, um, because it's it's not gonna get over soon. So I think we should get used to the changes that are coming to, towards us. Yeah, yeah. acceptance is so important. Uh, yeah. Going out to work still and uh, you know, what kind of work have you been doing? Was it difficult to decide to go out in the first place? Uh, no, actually, uh, uh, at the start, uh, I really wanted to go out because, because I, I know that in Sikkim, uh, there aren't many people, you know, really documenting uh, visually. I mean, there are people, but I know what kind of visuals that are coming out in Sikkim. Right. So there aren't many there aren't many people uh, documenting uh, the current event and the lockdown. Right. So I really wanted to go out and you know document what what was happening around us. But uh, what happened for two three weeks was uh, I didn't have a media pass, so I don't work for a, for an agency or a media. So I work independently, and whatever right. project I do is very personal to me. So right. so I don't have a media media ID card. So I had to like literally, you know, <laughs> call up uh, many people to get me a video, uh, media card, right. which took a lot of time. So it almost took like three weeks. And finally, uh, there's a local media called Summit Times. Okay. So I worked with them before. Okay. So I requested them like uh, again and again and again. So finally, they gave me a media card. Then, then after that, I, you know, started to go out and document the event. Yeah. Uh, and, and it also illustrates the importance of persistence if you're working as an independent photographer or journalist or media person. Yeah. So keep being persistent, yeah. otherwise yeah. a lot of things don't work out the first time you try it or you ask or whatever. That's, that's true. That's true. So, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, facing this, I'm facing this right now because there are things that I want to do which right. I'm not able to do it. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, mentally, how are you dealing with work? It's, we have, like you said, a lot of things have changed and it's also changed the way we all have to work. Uh, mm -hmm. Has it affected your normal instincts when you're on the job or on on outside working? Um, not not really. Uh, the way I work usually is like uh, I I have an approach of going very slow. 
it's not to, it's not to do with photography itself you know right. usually i do things i i do, I, I do it very slowly and right. and for me at first when i thought of documenting this lockdown i thought this was this was for me you know because i can see like empty streets uh, everything was you know trying to make us slow the process was very slow for me so i thought it was uh, something for me you know i want to do this but after documenting for a few days it was quite uh, became monotonous right. because i was not uh, i don't have the access to go certain places i only could go to certain areas and yeah after a while I, it was not it was it became weird because i thought it was something for me you know something silent slow but afterwards it became very weird for me to see no one in the street uh, only dogs roaming around few people it was kind of weird for me yeah, i can't i can't i mean it's i can imagine it's uh, very strange to see your own city uh, or own town yeah. or whatever at home t- transformed in that way to that extent especially uh, you know gangtok being such a uh, you know whatever it is it's a hub for a lot of people who like to come and visit there and yeah it's not a it's, it's a quite a bustling city it's not a, you know very quiet or a sleepy city that way uh, yeah, so true. yeah so i can i can understand uh, now you know moving on to your uh, work around uh, you know i mean it's your work exists exactly around covid but it's uh, something that you've uh, you know where you've been going out and reacting like you said mm-hmm. to the way that mm-hmm. your uh, you know that your city has uh, that your city has changed uh, so yeah. uh, could you i'm just going to uh, you know get into a uh, you know share screen now hopefully you can also uh, see it yeah yeah i can see it. Uh, yeah, yeah i can see you just yeah so uh, yeah. yeah so it's, 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 just talk us through your work that you've been doing and whenever you're ready for me to shift to the next image you can <coughs> just, uh, move on let's let's start yeah, with that i think i i think i'll just uh, give a, a short brief on uh, please, please. the the you know the idea that that came to, came into me and that uh, the thing that i wanted to visually show in this work uh, you know i've been seeing images uh, like i i didn't wanted to document uh, this whole lockdown per se like uh, you know in a in a linear narrative that like go and document people right. struggling it was more of a response for me uh, what really i mean it's a response for me of what happened you know in the whole city in my life yes. so what i felt during that time and also the document in the document not in a you know straightforward way right so the first image was more of like you know trying to it was everything was like shut and you can right. only see like a blurry thing about in the landscape right so and and again this is a city which is like uh, the second image uh, yeah and the first one feels very claustrophobic as well which is something we all are yeah. dealing with right now especially as people who go out a lot and engage with a lot of people or things outside us outside our home yeah yeah i can feel yeah. that claustrophobia so, so that was the idea behind uh, the first image sure and again the second image uh, um, and i i chose, I chose to do particular this area i wanted to sh- not shoot in the daytime but uh, right. it's almost in the you know sunset where you can see a little bit of skies and and so you know so to, i mean they were basically empty streets and yeah and it gives it that sense it's, of it's very really, feeling right that dusk feeling yeah, uh, that dusk has a kind of a very eerie kind of feeling anyway yeah and then you add the emptiness and how deserted everything is it sort of makes it a, takes it to another level yeah so yeah you, so basically i wanted to talk about the psychological aspect of the whole situation right now right. Uh, that we are going through right uh, you know the psych- i mean it could be you know, when you talk about uh, you know empty uh, seeing empty streets you talk about social distancing right. i mean this is the event i think my friend i was talking to my friend who well who i work with in a research called fatih pass which we'll talk later Okay. so i was discussing this issue with him you know maybe we could do something on this because it's really very related to our project for the past because i think it's uh, after world war 2 this is the first event where the border has been sh- all the border has been shut down and when you look at uh, in sikkim in sikkim also you know there are hard borders like uh, the border with china uh, it has always been hard 
you know but but now what happening what's happening is even the soft borders which are in uh, uh, west bengal to kalimpong and darjeeling side those has also been barricaded so i'm wondering how this uh, are these changes going to be uh, an opportunity for the politicians and the people who are ruling right. to make this permanent mm. because it's a huge opportunity to stop immigrants mm. a lot of things can be solved right right and when you talk about nrc ca you know all the right. stuff right this is a huge opportunity so i'm thinking on that line so basically i wanted to cover that uh, cover that uh, issue also but i can't uh, i'm not able to get access to that cases right. so i'm not able to share images on that right now as of now so but but it's something you're, yeah. you're thinking about in the future yeah sorry please continue. yeah something on the future on on this particular series itself sure uh, and yeah again uh, just wanted to show the empty uh, streets and also the water you know i know you have a fascination with water which we'll discuss later but uh, you know even in yeah. the earlier image the the water mm. and the kind of reflection of there's something you know there's there's a little bit of magic and life coming from the water but that's the only life in the picture you know so that's a another yeah. and the sky of course yeah. to some extent where you can see yeah, yeah. some definition of clouds but even that is very you know mm -hmm. uh, very obscured it's not very clear or you know big yeah. clouds yeah one of my friend one of my friend uh, i posted one of the image and one of my friend commented saying uh, why are, why are you posting such sad images <laughs> i was like oh, it's a sad situation right now you know this is what yeah. it is <laughs> no and it's so, uh, it's a reflection of what you are feeling and going through as like you said it's a psychological yeah. series uh, for sure exactly i mean i can't i won't be able to like explain it in like details to you know so, like a lot of people yeah. again and again uh, this is yeah sorry yeah. please continue so yeah i'm mean, empty street when just the dog uh, walking and even the dog is like it's not like a beautiful dog or pretty dog it's the dog is like a little bit uh, yeah. weird and you know so i mean kind of trying to put that sense uh, in the images trying to when thinking of the series so uh, trying to which i'm working on right yeah this could be added to the you know the, i think a lot of people are very uh, fascinated by kudelka's uh, photo of the dog in the snow i think a lot of people have uh, been influenced by that i don't i maybe it's not a uh, case here but okay it reminds me, <laughs> I mean, I it reminds me of uh, that picture in a sense it's a very different kind of an image but uh, you know just the dog yeah. the center of the frame and a very mm -hmm. quiet background again you know just uh, just small bits of life here and there a dog on the side a couple of yeah. mm -hmm. and some lights on that sort of gives you another feeling like oh there are people here you know but not enough yeah yeah so i mean I, yeah i wanted to like put in uh, like few people around i didn't i just didn't wanted to show like empty everything empty yeah. so i mean that that would there'll be like just showing what it's not but because, it's on the yeah uh, sorry yeah because i mean, I mean there's still people walking around you know so, yeah. and and it's yeah. on the edges yeah. but it's on the edges they're on the edges as well you know they're not yeah. like a immediate portrait uh, again another very famous uh, ng mark in uh, gangtok yeah. everybody who's visited there knows this tourist information center uh, uh, where you have to go and get permissions to go north as well yeah uh, <laughs> but uh, again you know so you see the one thing the atm the lone light in this whole situation the atm yeah is kind of funny also if you look at it uh, yeah you know a normally a place that's filled with people filled with tourists filled with locals filled with uh, you know uh, people who are working here in ng mart which is a very a uh, busy junction or busy road in uh, gangtok probably the busiest mm -hmm. but now again you know you're showing it in a very different light i love the clouds and the time of the day also yeah i mean i was just like i was also like quite excited to see this image right in front of me <laughs> like just the the bit of uh, light on the the atm and the yeah. skies yeah So I was like quite excited to like see this. I I photographed this just this image in like lot of movies. <laughs> yeah, so and it shows the thing of the, how the slow approach also works where you're not rushing to get that one image and finish and move on but you're exploring yeah. that space and what you're feeling in that space for a longer stretch of time. Yeah. Yeah, this uh yeah, this I'd let you explain because I can't uh... Yeah, so I mean um so this is basically like to show the i mean one of the uh, actually what actually what happened uh, this was actually 
uh, when uh, the government issued a notification saying uh, you can open some shops uh, so but this shop particular shop was didn't uh, follow the guidelines so they were the whole shop was uh, barricaded and you know oh. put a lock so i mean i I wanted to show. I mean, even the red. Uh, yeah, it looks like blood mark on it. Yeah, so a red. I mean, if you I mean, the color red itself can you know interpret so many things. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, so I, I'm trying to add to that. I don't think it works. <laughs> I think it. Right now, uh, this, yeah, I think it's a pretty powerful image. I mean, uh, it's a quiet image, but a very powerful and quiet image at the same time. Yeah. Because uh, you know, there's a. Yeah. Sorry, please go on. Yeah, please, please tell me. No, no, I was just. Uh, this is just what I'm uh, noticing as a lay person looking at it. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's. You see the lock. You know, it's a lock, and you feel immediately. Oh, there's a lockdown. But it also feels mm. like an like a sort of a symbol for me of the lockdown. You know, in a way. Uh, yeah. Not just, uh, yeah. You know, and your the story that you've told also is very important to understand, and you have documented a very important aspect of the lockdown. Uh, mm. You know, saying that you know how shops, how people are affected, how their livelihood can be affected so easily. And how they yeah. shut down, but also how yeah. it sort of feels like all of our hearts maybe sort of locked down a little bit, you know, with the blood kind of coming, yeah, cloth and things of that. Maybe a little too yeah, definitely dark. But yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it is definitely dark. I think. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know, this is a, in the next one also. When I looked at it first, one after the other, again, it made me think. You know, like oh, you know, this is like a stain of you know. Blood again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So exactly like that's why I put the images like from that to this uh, because I wanted to follow the red uh, color. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's it's about that only. What you're saying, uh, you know, the red uh, and and the imaginary lines uh, that has been brought upon us. You know, and it's kind of uh, weird, but uh, I don't want to follow this, but. There's a still like there's a bit of fear that I need to follow it. Uh, you know, like I know exactly. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of. Uh, it's, I think uh, a lot of <laughs> are feeling that way. You know, like the, we're all yeah. in some way the, to do the work that we're doing. We're all rebels in some way, but now we're yeah. all forced. Even the rebels are forced to be a little scared and not cross the line. You know, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a strange feeling for all of us. Again, uh, yeah. beautiful image. That really goes into the psychology of what is happening right now. I'll let you describe yeah. it. Yeah. So same. Uh, uh, this I mean, talking about psychology and you know how. Uh, so I mean, this image is of a uh, of a boundary that has been laid uh, near a medical shop. So I mean, just talks talks about uh, you know how this the the psychological aspect of you know how we have. You know, like the the distance that has been created now, mm -hmm. the social distancing. We are talking about a lot of people are talking about. You know, follow social distancing and all the stuff. You know, uh, the, so uh, the image I want to talk on that, but also it has some. Uh, there's a there's a tight connection to it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, you know, like the ropes, right. which are, I feel like it's still holding on to it. Right. So something right. like that kind of feeling to it. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's uh, maybe the connection uh, we all have and feel and have reconnected to maybe in this time. You know, a lot yeah. of people are connecting with old friends and old family. Or, yeah, and which again, okay, beautifully it comes to the next <laughs> uh, picture. Yeah, which is another one I really yeah. loved. I saw this on your Instagram feed and uh, yeah, yeah. Please, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just. I mean, just talking about this images, uh, image. Uh, uh, I really like the the flow of the hands uh, mm. holding, mm. Uh, which is like I felt like something like it flows, you know, like the water you're talking about. So yeah. it's kind of flowing, which I really liked it. I mean, so and yeah. and and just the and just the line, you know, and this there's a kind of uh, softness to it. Yeah, uh, we I mean, two people holding and the situation right now, you know, with this whole uh, COVID Corona thing and and just the boundary. It's. Uh, I mean, you can interpret. I think I also want I mean, people to look right. at this image and feel what they want to feel. Uh, sometimes that's why I, sometimes I don't write anything on my post mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's 
it's also important to let others see the images and you know interpret in their own ways yeah, so sometimes yeah. that is also important yeah yeah so, and especially for images like this that you know aren't uh, you know, yeah. straight straight portraits or a close up of someone's face but without any information but this is very different you know because this is a feeling and for me yeah, when so, i see it i feel you know because i've been anxious about this situation from time to time and mm-hmm. i can feel the anxiety also where one person has reached out to the hand of someone they trust and they're holding on yeah. to the hand very tight in a situation yeah. that is a little bit ner- nervous you know i can feel that she's maybe mm-hmm. a little nervous as well she's of course it's mm-hmm. also so there's also affection and loving uh, loving gesture but there's also mm-hmm. some nervousness that's coming from this you know, that i feel yeah, yeah. sorry and uh, moving from hands to another hand uh, this is a uh, a slightly uh, funnier image maybe <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah a few symbols of course he's wearing uh, two different gloves which is interesting on itself then you know the little yeah. bob mali and the and the marijuana leaf and <laughs> the pocket the pocket coming out a bit because maybe he's just pulled out something from his pocket but he's forgotten to put it back in mm-hmm. so these are all things we've all been doing we've all been walking out with some money or a card in our pockets to pay for stuff or a list of stuff if to buy and then we are very worried but yeah. got something from the pocket i always get worried oh you know now i've taken it and touched it what do i do i have to disinfect this thing now my phone or whatever it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's like it's weird yeah it's uh, all this uh, the changes that uh, yeah yeah and then from hands yeah. to feet again the i mean i, I didn't wanted to show people uh, you know technically the face and all the stuff uh, mm. but I, i mean you can't avoid that every time yeah so it's it is very uh, this thing you know then uh, for the first time we see uh, people but they are covered they are hidden behind masks as most people are nowadays yeah so coming uh, to the earlier images of the law right so sure yeah so it was the first day when uh, like a few uh, the, there was a notification saying that you know the shops were open and a lot of things you know right so people were i don't know people were excited to go out people felt you know they wanted to see you know how it's like to go out after yeah. so long time yeah or <laughs> even the shopkeepers they were so anxious mm. that they are not earning money right uh there are a lot of people that day and and the, and the and the shop particularly i saw and people were sitting there like just waiting and waiting yeah and the tours the, i mean obviously this is like tours and travels you know yeah. and, and at this time of the time yeah. mean, they even thought of like just opening up the tours and travels uh, which was like it's kind of sad it is very sad But i mean if to, to think of the desperation that they have that they would have yeah. thought, you know whatever small chance we have for some money to come in let's try to do it yeah it's so, a lot of small businesses i mean we've seen of course so many migrants affected of course that is a horrible thing but a lot of small yeah. businesses and a lot of small business owners also have been affected including people like you and me who depend on the yeah independent, uh, you know or the free so called freelance economy to make our money yeah another yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah, i guess here you see another small business owner who runs a small yeah same owner. yeah it was the same image see, this lady was like literally like uh, standing there for quite a while uh, and waiting for people i mean opening up a clothes shop so yeah. that was quite like, striking to for me to see that uh, and you've really and you've really got her eyes at the right time because now eyes have become all the more important because people's faces are covered by masks so yeah true these are emoting a lot for us nowadays uh, and mm-hmm. you can see her that uncertainty and uh, you know sort of a little bit of stress as well in her eyes you know and she so like you said she's searching and hoping maybe mm. yeah another okay i guess a, a top angle shot this time but uh, to literally show how physical distancing is working in gangtok mm-hmm. right now yeah yeah and in like this the this in images are like all about that uh, i mean it's also to show like uh, excuse me uh you know if you look at it this whole situation properly uh, there has been uh, uh, certain rules applied to our lives now you know right you should do this you should do that right and whether we should trust that or not mm. I mean, I for personally for me I like I feel little uh, you know uh, not to sure whether to follow that or follow this mm. 
it's kind of a weird situation because I, I live in fear. There's a fear in me as well. You know, a bit of yeah. fear that you know, something might happen, what will happen. Yeah. But some, some, some way or the other, there has been uh, this kind of fear imposed on us. Yeah. You know? uh, cool. And even when you talk about this whole, uh, what do you call that, uh, the recent app, Arogya Setu app, yes. which has been made mandatory and uh, yeah. it's like a crime if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, apparently it's a it's crime had, if you don't uh, have Yeah. It. I mean, I don't know how in, in the long term after the whole COVID situation, uh, you know, goes off and the why vaccine has been created after so many years. Yeah. Will this app be used as a, you know, tool for surveillance? I don't know. I mean, you know, so yeah. I mean, I, mean, I worry so that many, it's so many. Uh, yeah. I worry that it's being used so as for surveillance right now, you know. <laughs> yeah. Could be. I mean, you know, so those are the things, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, because of the situation, you know, yeah. the border has been shut, you know, the people's movement have been shut. Yeah. Uh, we have been told to follow this and that. And we are doing it because we live in fear. There is a, some kind of fear. I mean, it, it might be not be like, you know, uh, a big fear, but there, there is some kind of fear. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. A, a fear in place. And, uh, you know, that uh, brings us to the, you know, to the end of your... Uh, of your work around, yeah. I don't know. Of course, I know this is an ongoing project. Uh, since we are still under lockdown, I know that you'll continue to work on it. So we look forward to seeing, yeah. mm. you know, the completed project. Uh, hopefully, it won't be a very long-term project. We all want to get back to normal <laughs> life, but uh, but yet, you know, yeah, at least you're spending your time in a in a way that is uh, yeah. you know, that gives you some sort of comfort. It helps you work through your fears and your anxiety mm. as well. So that's a good yeah. uh, that's a good thing. Uh, so moving on to a couple of other things, uh, uh, Kunga, please tell me, what does it mean to be a Lepcha photographer? Uh, how does your native identity influence your life and work? First of all, does it influence your life and work? And if it does, how mm. uh, I don't know if it really uh, influences uh, per se, because... Uh, while growing up, my mom uh, is a Tibetan, and my dad is a Lepcha. So my mom passed away when I was very young. And so my, basically I was, you know, uh, born up by my dad. Right. And I studied outside all my life, you know, the childhood days has been spent in Kalimpong. And okay. so and even in college, I went outside. So, uh, I, you know, there, ha there, there, there hasn't been like a connection to say like, you know, I'm a Tibetan, I'm a Lepcha. Per se, but there has been an urge, urge to uh, to find that connection uh, from my mom's side and my dad's side. So, yeah. So but a, uh, in terms, it's yeah, a search for influence, your roots. No. Yes, yes. So, in influence, I don't know, but there has been a question uh, coming up recently. Like uh, in, in a few years, there has been a question for, you know, popping up in my head. You know, uh, trying to find my roots. So, which for which. Uh, there are certain uh, like research that I'm doing on my mom's side as well, and uh, towards Zongu, which I want to like you know uh, a story that I want to do. So yeah. Okay. Uh, now we're going to move on to some of your uh, earlier work at uh, at this point, and uh, I'm just going to take a second to get that. So uh, a breathtakingly beautiful uh, point of time uh, yeah. uh, gone off into a thing. Uh, so you started off using photography as a way to travel. Uh, what were those yeah. early days like for you? You know, do you remember some of the lessons you learned back then? Uh, you also seem to be connected a lot to this one, one place, uh, Lashar Valley. Uh, so mm. could you tell me a little bit about this, these early days of your photography journey? Um, yeah, I think like every, like every all other photographer when they uh, when they start practicing photography, I think they wanted to travel. Uh, same for me, like uh, I wanted to travel the world, you know, all that stuff in my head, the dreams, you know. Uh, but I, I mean, then I, the reality is that that you can't do that, you know. So, and then I decided to travel Sikkim, you know, try to. Uh, 
practice photography, you know. Uh, and I was really interested in, at first, uh, when I started photography, I was really interested in travel photography. So sure. there was no kind of, uh, uh, you know, sense or idea that uh, something called storytelling or documentary photography existed uh, during that time. So, right. yeah, so I, mo I basically I did a lot of travel and you know, shot single images, uh, beautiful, beautiful pictures. So that's what uh, I used to do. Uh, at my time, uh, when I started side out, and these are this is the uh, if I'm not wrong, it's a a, a yak race, right? The, yeah, yeah, it's a yak race. Uh, so this was uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a very beautiful place. You know, there's a Oxbow uh, River. Uh, there's a river which meanders like a snake. You know, uh, it's a very beautiful place, and the story there itself is quite nice. Uh, how the Tibetan uh, not Tibet, I don't say Tibetan, they're just like people that are right. stuck between uh, Tibet and Sikkim. Now they're in Sikkim, but earlier okay. they used to go to Tibet and Sikkim uh, grazing the yaks. So right, right. Then they are, some of the family got stuck in Tibet and some of them got stuck in Sikkim. Uh, so now they are Sikkimese. So, so I wanted to, like, at that time, this point of time, I was just wanted to travel and see this place. So it was a, uh, this is like a, it's a beautiful place there, you know, that yeah, you can just this, like, sit there and, and this image is stunning, nothing. you know, it, uh, it could be from uh, Selgado's new book, Genesis. It could have been in that book, you know, it's such a, such a great image. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big <laughs> comparison. Yeah, yeah no, no, but I mean, uh, but I think you know what I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of similarity yeah, yeah. in the tone, in the tonality and also in the space where it's so raw and wild, you know, but uh, yeah. something that you can only imagine in a dream maybe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it just feels like the beginning of time before there were any humans or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Another, you know, and these images, I'm showing this also to show people how you have progressed in the way that you see the world and also see mm -hmm. images and the tones and how you're working on tones and how you're mm -hmm. doing it as well. Mm -hmm. and yeah. This is something that. Yeah, this was in Zong Sorry? Please? Yeah. This was in Zongri. Uh, this are like okay. porters that's going to the base camp. Okay. Yeah, I I nearly I nearly uh, died. Uh, oh, how did that happen? Yeah. Tell us that story, please. Uh, no, I mean uh, this was the first time actually, like uh, my start of photography days. Excited right. young guy, you know, right. trying to travel the world, trying to see things. <laughs> right. So basically, what I did was I I tried to catch up with the yaks and the uh, the yak herder. Right. I mean, they are used to this climate; they can walk fast. Yes. So I was basically running around and photographing them, and all of a sudden, uh, I I had uh, difficulty in breathing. Oh God! Okay. I literally couldn't breathe. I saw like, oh shit! You know, my brain stopped uh, functioning. Oh man! Okay. I thought I'd like pass out. <laughs> oh, but, uh, but luckily, there were like two Germans with me, and right. there was one local guy. So they carried me like one by one, one by back to the base camp, and oh. slowly, slowly, I got better. But it was like quite an experience. The first time, like uh, going near to the mountain, right. base camp, and and, and in the high altitude. experience, you know, yeah. And getting that experience uh, at that moment was like it was quite uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, like so many things to learn. You know, uh, that time. You know. Yeah, that, that's when like I started to realize. You know, I think going slow is like uh, you know the way that way that you take like, a yeah, like taking a slower approach. Yeah, and you can see some, uh, of course, some of your other uh, travel. Uh, see, a lot of uh, war photographers uh, and documentary photographers, you know, they, they uh, after they've spent a lifetime uh, photographing, you know, the most horrifying things that humanity has to mm -hmm. offer, they uh, mm -hmm. often go back to photographing simpler subjects, you know, like, uh, like nature, like their families. As you know, there's, I feel like there's a limit to how much suffering a human being or a photographer, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. can this without burning out. I've noticed yeah. that your work often looks at life rather than focusing on things that go wrong. Like even I've noticed that even, even the one that you've photographed, you showed us on COVID, you haven't gone straight to mm. you know, the most, oh, you know, this is what is going wrong. This is the huge problem that is happening. Or this is a person who's really suffering or something like that. You've told it in a mm. much more calm, much more, you know, slow, much more relaxed or much more gentle way. And I've noticed that a lot yeah. in your uh, pictures. Could you, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about this? Is this a approach <clears throat> that you take? Yeah. Um, 
actually I mean, I was starting course, photography this, uh, instagram that i'm showing you guys just to give you some examples of his other work sorry please continue from that yeah no actually when i uh, started uh, photography i was inspired by james nackley right <laughs> and i wanted to and when i wanted to be a world war photographer like right. all, all, all of us all of us wanted to uh, even <laughs> even i saw yeah, him I think, and robert and robert kappa and other but now i know the reality yeah. of some of their stories which we won't get yeah, into true. Yeah, let's move on <laughs> yeah so yeah and and i realized that uh, later on i realized that you know for me being in sikkim right uh, this not happening right now I mean, this is not the situation that's happening right now I, mean, i wanted to like show my place right and what it is right now so and i think the the, the thing that you're talking about is just showing life i think it basically shows sikkim itself uh, as how it is you know uh, right. i think i feel like people uh, 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 people of sikkim especially in the villages are really uh, humble you know they 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 are, they go slow you know there are, that there are things that you know like uh, i mean i mean you can't talk basically about all the uh, the ex, uh, what do you call that uh, i mean the war war talk kind of images in sikkim right. you know right so and i think photography was also to like uh, well, you know it, it was a medium to find myself right and try to understand uh, what i am and to this world and you know so basically like photography has taught me to understand myself better so and i thought and the tones that i'm uh, the tone that i i'm putting in my images and the way i'm shooting right now it's basically i think it's uh, says a lot of things about me as well uh well uh, and i'm into the slow approach uh, lot of things so yeah this this is one I of guess, my favorite uh, uh, images that you've taken of course i think a lot of people love this but yeah yeah so yeah please carry on. yeah yeah so i think the the thing that you're talking about the life i think it's yeah basically i think it's the place itself the the place uh, changes you i mean i mean you know the the place itself makes you feel uh, what you want to show and so you have just been sensitive yeah. to that feeling and then try to translate it through your images and how you're making your images yeah exactly uh, when i when i go to a place uh, i don't like to photograph uh, i mean I, I, it's not like i don't like it uh, but but that's my dad's work or oh. he likes he likes to make all that stuff uh, this kind oh, of <laughs> I think your dad and my dad will get along very well even my dad likes me god these <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well, that's that's so that's no i try to get the feel of the place first uh, i try sure. to understand uh, you know when i i mean there's a sense, sense of feeling that you get when you reach a place right and that i experience when i travel to certain areas and certain places right so so i try to get that feeling of whatever i'm feeling but uh, i try to get that in my uh, try to try to get that visual and try to photograph that uh, please uh, what i feel yeah i think you yeah you seem to be very successful in that because uh, you know you can really feel something when you look at your images uh and yeah. you know now i uh, did so what does it mean to be a, a local photographer in a region where outsiders often drop in uh, parachute in sometimes to tell your stories now see i've done this myself i'm not before a point of finger anyone else let me look at myself i've done this myself and you know i've been working on a long form story in upper zongo about land about the land rights of your lepcha people and i am as far from <coughs> india as it can get i'm from bangalore so i'm mm-hmm. in the corner of the country and i'm coming so yeah. you know i'm coming in there to your place and your home so i wonder if this story also that i'm doing would be better mm-hmm. if it was done by someone from the region and community like you you know mm-hmm. i feel like maybe it would be you know much much better than uh, an outsider like me coming there and, uh, and doing it so could you just talk a little bit about that while you're talking i'm just going to mm-hmm. bring some of your uh, mm-hmm. from uh, from uh, uh, you know from uh, bumchu uh, which is a festival that i'll i'll allow mm-hmm. you to talk about this the images and the festival as well Yeah, um yeah coming back coming to your uh, first question i think uh, yeah that the, the, i mean this question has been like uh, we have been talking on this uh, even my, my friends you know 
that uh, uh, and as I told you earlier, uh, I think people has the right to go anywhere and uh, document. Like, like I think we when you're growing up, when you started to practice photography, I think we also wanted to travel the world and do stories. Right. You know? Of course. Yeah. So people has every right to come to my place and also do the story. But I think it's very important for that person to show what actually, uh, you know, what's there right now in our place and not to exotize, exo, you know, exot exoticize our place or try to show something that's not there, you know, which has been happening to our place, uh, especially in the Northeast where a lot of photographers come and uh, they try to see Northeast as a place of exotic land, with exotic humans, right. exotic place, you know, oh, you, when you talk about Northeast, uh, there was a, I mean, we had this uh, huge argument in Instagram when, when this guy, this, I don't want to talk, say, say his name or something like that, no, right. but he had, made a, he had made a short commercial video for some company and so he's talking about the cognac tribes in Nagaland. Yeah. So I saw the video and I was like, felt so, you know, like bad about uh, you know, how he portrayed the cognac people and so basically he's trying to show cognac in one you know, yeah. like the headhunters. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this reduction, and that, you know? very redu reduction. Yeah, reduction. Yeah, it's like a very uh, colonialist mentality, you know, like showing right. people in. So, and that has been happening not only in Ireland, that has been happening all over Northeast because we have been regarded as, oh, in the Northeast, you know, like, oh, this and that, you know, like uh, yeah, Nagas, you know, like all tribe, you know, like beautiful place, you know, but. Yeah. And I think that shouldn't happen, you know. Yeah. And f and when you come, I mean, you came to Zongu, so I saw your work. I mean, it's a good work, you know. I mean, the thing that it did was, uh, I think, from your heart, and you try to show what uh, what's been happening. So yeah. I think it's good because at that point of time, when you came, I think which was which year was that when you did uh, this the story? first uh, time? Actually, the first time I came to Gangtok was in two thousand eight. When that's when I saw, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Dawa sir and uh, uh, Ongchok and a couple of other people sitting on the hunger yeah. strike. And that's when mm -hmm. I first got introduced. Till then, even I was like a traveler, a tourist coming, enjoying yeah. oh, how so beautiful Sikkim is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I had gone up to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Guru Dongmar and come back. So I had seen Lache and Lachung, all those places. And then the yeah. first time when I came back and I saw them sitting on a hunger strike, then it hit me that, oh, there's another reality over here. It's not just some mm -hmm. beautiful place in the mountains of the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah, uh, so uh, I think that 2008. I think I think I was in college that time. I, I didn't know anything about uh, the hunger strike and all. And I'm I getting to read this uh, a few years back, and you know, I worked on the Hyderabad uh, Dam project with, uh, with some of the people in media. Yeah, also. in fact, it's uh, so, coming up in a bit, so I won't uh, yeah, talk so, about that too much. But uh, more about uh, this right now. Yeah, so uh, the no, I mean, I mean, if there are certain people come with a good intention of showing something, I think it's totally fine, because the same the thing uh, I might not be able to tell, right? You will be able to say it in a different way, and, and I mean, I can also say that you know, a local photographer can really do a good job in telling that story. Uh, will you, will you be able to do it or not? So that's also the question you have to think about that, right? I mean, if there is a uh, people, if there's someone in locally who is able to deliver, I think you should do that uh, story. But I mean, when coming to, uh, you know, like I mean, outsider coming and doing the story, uh, I think it's totally fine. I mean, yeah. Personally, I think, and uh, sorry, sorry, please continue. Yeah, and uh, coming to like you know who'll do it better. Uh, uh, I mean. If a local photographer who has uh, good knowledge in how to tell a story and you know to visually and all the stuff, I think he will have more access definitely to doing a story because there's no language barrier. Yes, uh, he'll understand his place more. Yes, and I think uh, he'll be able to connect more. I feel uh, he'll be able to do the story properly more uh, than an outsider. Yeah, definitely. so. So, you know, then I believe that maybe it's the responsibility of uh, people, uh, you know, whether outsiders or local photographers who have that knowledge to sort of bring up more people onto that platform and 
make sure that there are a lot of people who have that ability or the way to tell the stories themselves rather than uh, yeah. expecting an outsider or not expecting but you know where an outsider comes in parachutes in for 2 3 days or a week mm-hmm. there's a story and they're gone you know they after that they might never come back also and yeah. that and like you said that from individual to individual it does differ of course there are people who come in with a different mindset and intent and people who come in mm-hmm. you know, who want to give proper context who do proper interviews who give uh, proper caption information about the people they're photographing not just exotic yeah. images reduced reduction reductionist images colonial images yeah. not kind of images so yeah i mean i guess there's a responsibility that uh, that that takes place you know and uh, even for instance one of the times i had come i had come there with a filmmaker from the us again i won't name names but uh, mm-hmm. she uh, came and she took so much of footage uh, about this whole situation dam situation and promised uh, the activist gyatso and other people that we will talk about in a short while in the interview that they that she will mm-hmm. send them all the footage but never send the footage and completely uh block them off didn't respond to any of their emails calls or anything you know and this for me is unthinkable the first thing i did as soon as i came back to bangalore was send all the images to mm-hmm. them so that act act which is affected citizens of pisa so they could use the images that is my whole idea as yeah. a photographer is forget about me making money out of an article first the people who need it should be able to use that image so yeah. these are all attitudes yeah. that different people have or don't have that's a different thing but uh, i guess it differs from individual to individual so maybe we shouldn't yeah. make a general statement but maybe look at yeah that's true we shouldn't make a yeah that that's very true i mean because so, well, a lot of people do the story like you know uh, with good in their heart and you know with more much more empathy and right yeah so uh, sorry uh, so just oh, the bumchu images the bumchu images Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, bhumsu first of all yeah uh, this was the i mean the, that's when the, uh, when i started to learning about documentary photography and sure. you know, i wanted to uh, do more uh, work on like, work on narrative and stories so i i went uh, to a annual festival which happens in uh, tashidin uh, in west sikkim okay. so where a, a water festival happens uh, the water is basically like uh, it's got from a river called rathung river which comes from a rathung rathung glacier like which is in uh, long and you know uh, towards kanyam place camp so it's a very, very sacred river so they store it for a year and they open it in during this time and the water is supposed to be very uh, uh therapeutic know, or sacred it's, it's holy uh, it's, it's supposed to be holy yeah sacred and holy so people come from a lot of places even from bhutan a lot of people actually come from bhutan to for this event and this very old ritual so so i, I was very excited to see this guy hasn't been there Right. Going from Sikkim, right. So it was an opportunity for me to like go and document this event and also see if it fit for myself what was happening. So I just went there and uh, yeah, shot this uh, images and it was a learning process for me you know, during the time. So this is a transition uh, when you're moving from a photographer who just shot anything for pleasure to someone who's looking at documentary seriously and trying to think yeah. in terms of a narrative structure now. Yeah, and also I I didn't want to like you know. So I'll just talk about the festival, but I also, I, I also wanted to talk about the whole essence of water in this uh, uh, right. story, right? Because it's all about water, and you know, for the uh, for a drop of water, people are standing in line, and people are people are pushed, people are being you know, fainting because they're in the line for a whole night. They stay from night till early morning, you know, midnight. So it's kind of weird for me that time, because, not weird, but it's kind of uh, I mean, started to question, you know, all this stuff, you know, like. For a drop of water, which is, which is believed to be holy, right, by all the I mean, you know, people, right. Uh, so you know, just for the faith, uh, with the standing in line and, yeah. So I, while you're talking about water, I got thirsty and I drank some water. Also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I wanted to show like how people spend the nights, uh, whole nights sitting there. And, Sorry, yeah. So I mean, of course, the yeah. feeling of the night with the moon, and then you see how people are uh, crashed out wherever they can get some sleep, I guess. Yeah. So did you shoot this on uh, on? Uh, sorry, did you rather did you make these pictures on film or uh, was it just a normal uh, digital camera? No, this was on digital uh, Canon. Uh, yeah. But you've pushed it to its limits in the night time, I can see. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's also yeah, interesting because it uh, adds a feeling as well. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, this is like some uh, people dancing. Uh, it's called shabda. Shabda is like a traditional dance, Sikkimese okay. dance. Okay. 
So there are people are enjoying and like you know, dancing, yeah. traditional dance. Wonderful. Under the full moon. Yeah, full moon. Yeah, some people like do a lot of party during this time. People are drinking and <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so this is like one of the the lady who painted. Uh, okay. Because she was sitting in the line. Is uh, you know I mean uh, like there's a lot of rush for to get the holy water. Right. Even the monks like they don't. <laughs> <laughs> They're jumping over to just like jumping over the thing. You know like yeah. So yeah. I think yeah, we've uh, you know we've come to the uh, we've come to the end of that interesting series of uh, of images as well. Uh, so moving on from that, and we've we've understood we've spoken about why it's important to mm. see uh, native perspectives, why it's not important, why why we shouldn't generalize also, and you know let people who can tell the stories tell the stories, uh, but especially if they're local, it uh, gives an advantage. Mm. Uh, so uh, you know. Uh, you know, could you tell me a little bit about you know there are a lot of artist collectives that are uh, you know forming to sort of bring uh, creators, artists, creators, photographers in mm -hmm. the together, and this is also an important step in sort of training other people, people learning from each other, and bringing all of you sort of pulling each other up at the same time. Uh, you know where the local voices increase, uh, local voices who can who uh, have the vocabulary and the ability to speak. Clearly, in narratives, mm -hmm. they are increasing in number through these collectives. Could yeah. you speak to me a little yeah. bit about why these collectives, uh, how they came about, first of all, and why they are so important to you guys? Mm. Um. Yeah, uh, actually, I mean, the, the reason that uh, all this collective came out was because of the fact that, uh, uh, you know, there was an urge in us, you know, to to tell our own stories. I mean, we were also quite. I think coming to back to your the other question, you know, like how you are outsiders coming into your story. So this, uh, we also felt the urge to do our own stories and our stories. Uh, for I mean, we also want to, you know, do the story and our work to be uh, shown to other people, and you know, and also the other thing about forming this collective is that the resources, the uh, especially with photography other art as well right but i'll just speak on photography right now uh, it's yeah. very minimal actually, right. mostly unavailable right and the art scene is totally like not there you know right so it was it's i think it's at this uh, this point it's very important for the collective you know so one of the collective is not use light box you uh, can see a meeting uh, uh, in here i guess right yeah it's in based in uh, assab and I not, see some... uh, it's not based anywhere actually and I see some familiar but, faces, Anka and Prakash Bhuvan uh, and uh, of course Rishi, the great Rishi K. No, Jinjara. No, you know no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, let's so, say, uh, I mean, I'm happy to also meet them in person. I've met them in person as well, but I'm also fans of their work. So I'm also a fan. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's good that you know them. Yeah. So what happened was, uh, during, I was excited for Angkor for a festival and I right. met Prakash at that time. So... We came to know that he's from a northeast and Angus from northeast. So we right. kind of mingled together and we started talking about you know how the scene in northeast and you know we should do something. So as soon as we uh, the Angkor festival got over, we came back. Right. So Prakash and uh, a few other people decided to let's do a residency in Majuli. Right. The self-funded residency, pay your own money. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So no further funding. <laughs> we decided to like shell out our own money from our bank, whatever we had, and we right. went to the Majuli and, and Prakash was the main guy. Yeah, he's a very uh, brilliant guy. You know, he knows a lot of things and yeah. I, learned a, I learned a lot of things from him. You know. yeah. he's, a, he's a very uh, knowledgeable guy in terms of photography. Right. So he taught, I mean, he was the main person to show and the other one is Matila. She was from Parchala. Both are from Par Parchala. Right. No, three, or four, three are from Parchala. Okay. Uh, so we formed a, another from Kowati, most of from Kowati. So we made everyone was supposed to do a story and you know take out prints right. at the last, and you know we were supposed to come up with an exhibition or a photo book. Okay, which never uh, <laughs> came out. Yeah, but we are still working. We are we are still working on the uh, collective book. 
Fantastic. So hopefully uh, it comes within this year. Uh, but it was yeah. a very uh, nice experience in Marjorie uh, doing this residency. Right. And you know, like learning a lot of things and just enjoying uh, drinking local. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's always so a good thing. <laughs> it was, yeah. So it was it was quite nice. Uh, it was yeah. It was really uh, a good experience. Yeah, and you can see and, how. Sorry, please continue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think I, I feel like you know this kind of thing should keep happening, uh, not just for one time event. Chali ha. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know all of them, huh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I just stayed in his place on the way back from when I was running away because of Corona. Okay. I was coming back to Bombay. I ran, I ran straight <laughs> oh, into the okay. danger zone. <laughs> from a very peaceful area, I came straight into the danger zone. I was staying at mm. Ibraj's place for a couple of days. He kindly put yeah. me. Up. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you can see some photo editing going on. Uh, you know, together. Yeah. So yeah. So it was quite like good, good exercise. You know, to what a beautiful play, way to do photo editing, huh? To sit in a beautiful lawn like this under the sky. It's a yeah. It's a perfect place actually. People have been I've, talking. Majid is thinking, but Majid is like. Heaven. <laughs> so and we'll see like some of your images from here later on uh, when we look at your website. So there's some beautiful images. And then we also the Confluence Collective where I've seen your work uh, shown. The reason why I wanted to bring up Confluence Collective is because you have just done a, 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 a you know a kind of a, a what would you call it a print sale. Let's because mm -hmm. everyone's calling it print sale, but it's not exactly that. What you were doing is something kind of different. You were raising money for tea workers. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, this side, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of money. Right? You raise a decent amount of money for them, right? Yeah, end. quite a lot actually. Like, yeah, yeah, and a lot of people contribute. Um, so it just shows I mean, how yeah. you know these collectives can also work for different things, and you know, uh, yeah. and also actually make a difference in a real world way to mm. people that they believe in. See, this is the uh, yeah. To quickly look at this uh, image, you can see that that was quite a. Large amount of money was raised, and if if you know photographers, yeah. you understand that two lakhs is a huge amount of money for us. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> you go to a lot of like personal projects with that. <laughs> so yeah, so you know, uh, it's it's wonderful what collectives can do and how much we can you know sort of uh, you know learn. Uh,